Starting off first with the UK and its decision to curb Huawei from the country's 5G networks. It has banned all mobile network providers from buying new Huawei 5G equipment after the 31st of December this year. The government of the UK has set out a strict timeline to remove the Huawei equipment from the country's 5G telecoms network completely by the year 2027. The British Digital Secretary Oliver Dowden has made that statement in the Parliament and has announced the plan for removing Huawei network from the country. This will delay our rollout of 5G. Our decisions in January had already set back that rollout by a year and cost up to a billion pounds. Today's decision to ban the procurement of new Huawei 5G equipment from the end of this year will delay rollout by a further year and will add up to half a billion pounds to costs. Requiring operators, in addition, to remove Huawei equipment from their 5G networks by 2027 will add hundreds of millions of pounds further to the cost and further delay rollout. This means a cumulative delay to 5G rollout of two to three years and costs of up to £2 billion. This will have real consequences for the connections on which all our constituents rely. And I have to say that to go faster and further beyond a 2027 target would add considerable and indeed unnecessary further costs and delays. And of course, the shorter we make the timetable for removal, the greater the risk of actual disruption to mobile telephones networks. The world-leading expertise of NCSC and GCHQ has enabled us to publish one of the most detailed analyses of the, of the risks of the, to the 5G network. Hours ahead of the ban, the chairman of Huawei's UK operations, John Brown, has stepped down. The former British Petroleum chairman, John Brown, will be leaving in the month of September, six months before his term was supposed to end. UK's ban follows sanctions imposed by Washington, which has claimed that the firm poses a security threat, something which the Chinese firm has continuously rejected. And joining us live on the broadcast this minute is our correspondent Benji Ayer, live from London. Benji, that announcement coming along expected lines, a very strict timeline, though at the same time that's been laid out. Uh, to what extent uh, do we expect uh, uh, this timeline to actually uh, see more nitty gritties being defined over the next few days and weeks ahead? And if you can explain to our viewers the reactions that we are tracking at this point coming in from the UK. Well, it's a great question. I think what's important to note is this isn't the end of the story. It is only the beginning. There may be more changes to that timeline. There may be more decisions taken in the next couple of years. The situation has dramatically transformed just over the last six months or so. Back in January, Huawei technology was seen as the future in the United Kingdom when Britain gave the Chinese firm the green light to limited parts of the 5G network. Now there's been a U-turn, as you heard Colt Secretary Oliver Dowden confirming that it, no firms will be able to buy uh, Huawei 5G equipment from next year. Uh, and in addition to that, there'll be a phasing out of existing 5G Huawei equipment uh, by the time uh, of 2027. Uh, he said, in fact, that they, the government has significantly changed its assessment and it doesn't have confidence that it can guarantee uh, the security of Huawei in its networks. Now, the head of telecommunications company BT says trying to scrap Huawei from the 5G network within the next decade is practically impossible. It would lead, they claim, to blackouts due to how embedded Huawei's infrastructure is. Uh, but there's been many Conservative MPs who outright reject Huawei. They want it out of Britain uh, due to the fact, they argue, uh, that uh, Huawei gives Beijing intelligence services information, a claim that uh, Huawei uh, absolutely denies. And the, the reason this decision has come is due to a number of different factors. There's quite a degree of context behind uh, the U-turn here. Uh, one of the reasons uh, might be because of new, fresh accounts coming from China about their treatment of the Uyghur Muslims in the west of the country. Uh, there's also uh, different decisions being made from the United States about sanctions against Huawei. Uh, 
uh, which have highlighted many different security questions. The U.S. has long held an opinion uh, that uh, China could use the vendor to spy or cyber attack uh, the U.K., uh, something, again, that Huawei denies. Uh, and uh, therefore, the UK has taken this sort of action in light of that and also in light of uh, the different attitudes towards China about the handling of the coronavirus pandemic. So a number of different reasons there. Uh, and it's also worth noting that 5G is already in the UK. It's seen as the future of technology. It can be used in driverless cars because it's a, a, a way of a technology working in, in real time. And so the UK government recognizes that and believes that Huawei has to, sorry, 5G, I should say, has to be rolled out across the country in coming years. But it's made the call today in the last few minutes that Huawei will not be part of that process, even if that means that the implementation of 5G takes several more years. Interesting. Now, uh, Benji, uh, this decision also comes as a U-turn in a way on part of the administration just six months after agreeing that Huawei could have a limited role. A lot, of course, has changed in the last few months. Primarily, it's the COVID-19 pandemic, as you pointed out. To what extent, though, is this decision coming as a result of the pressure exerted by the United States? That's a massive, massive factor, absolutely, because what those U.S. sanctions have done uh, is, is highlighted how some of Huawei's equipment that they would have used from America can't be used, and therefore there are still security questions that have arisen uh, from this. And so the pressure from the White House has been huge, but I think it is also part of a general trend about how the U.K. interacts with China. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before, it could be to do with the coronavirus pandemic, it could be to do with the treatment of Uyghur Muslims, and also, let's not forget, uh, the new imposition of a security law in Hong Kong, uh, a former British colony. Uh, and I think all of those factors tied together has provided the grounds for this decision that's been taken. But no doubt one of those factors absolutely is the U.S. sanctions. Uh, and there's always been this tension between the U.S. and the U.K. about the different approach to Huawei. Now, for the first time, those transatlantic allies are on the same side of the argument, uh, given that Oliver Dowden has uh, made this decision, final decision, claim the government, to get rid of Huawei or phase them out from Britain's uh, 5G network. What's the reaction been like from Huawei's uh, team so far? Any, uh, if at all, uh, hours ahead of the ban, of course, the chairman of the UK's operations, uh, John Brown, has already stepped down. Yes, I mean, it's only happened in the last couple of minutes, so no doubt there'll be a reaction throughout the day, throughout the week. I think it's quite clear already uh, we know where different politicians and uh, companies stand on the issue. You have a, a grouping of Conservative MPs from the governing party uh, who have never been comfortable with the idea of Huawei being involved in Britain's system, and they will probably be relieved about uh, Oliver Dowden's decision now. Although, of course, uh, Dowden... Uh, never said that Huawei would be completely scrapped from 4G, for example. So there'll be a few Conservative MPs that wanted the Culture Secretary to go even further. On the other hand, you have many telecommunications companies who you would think would be relieved about now uh, reduced competition from Huawei. But what often people don't recognise is how Huawei is truly embedded in the technologi ne technological networks here. Uh, and therefore, to completely rid of them from the system would take several, several years. 2027 is the date given by Oliver Dowden. Uh, but as I mentioned before, the head of telecommunications company BT say that really to get anything absolutely confirmed within the next decade would be impossible. And if the decisions are taken too quickly and if that phasing out and removal happens too quickly, then a lot of people who rely on Huawei for their uh, phone networks will, will not be able to use their phones. There'll be blackouts, essentially. So even if there is an eagerness and a willingness by this government to take that action, uh, the reality is that this will uh, take a, a several, several years and there'll be huge ramifications and huge reactions, no doubt, from Beijing, who will be furious with this decision and they will have uh, many things to say in the next couple of hours and days.
Absolutely. Benji, hold that thought. Uh, we are, in fact, getting in a report talking about the reaction that's come in uh, from Huawei. Uh, it has reacted to the UK government's ban now, saying that the ban is regrettable and that it will slow down Britain's move to the digital lane, like we just discussed. Not just that. Huawei has gone a step further to say that the decision is about US trade policies and is not about security. Benji, that reaction from Huawei coming in just minutes after uh, the UK has taken that decision to curb its role in the 5G networks and of course has uh, announced that fixed timeline in that direction to remove Huawei from the 5G network. Uh, this reaction coming along expected lines. Uh, this of course is a move which will please Washington but at the same time will attract a lot of ire from China. Yes, I don't think anyone can be too surprised by that reaction. Huawei have, uh, for a couple of days now, knowing this announcement was coming, threatened very harsh words, and, and we heard them there in, in a statement. Uh, the reaction from China will be more difficult to truly, uh, uh, I think, get our heads around, uh, in the sense that uh, whilst we do expect firm statements, it will be less uh, known what sort of actions will definitely be taken uh, and, and, and whether this kind of threatens the whole relationship between the UK and China. Uh, this isn't just about the 5G network and, and Huawei and technology. China has long looked to the UK as a place for direct investment uh, and there has been an effort from previous Conservative governments to get China on Britain's side and work together on different projects. That might be hampered now, and, and I, I think the ramifications will go further than just Huawei, and that there'll be implications for how the UK interacts with China on a number of different issues, be it America, uh, be it coronavirus. Uh, the UK government, I, I presume, would have thought about this uh, and would have uh, attempted to uh, think about the consequences here, uh, but this will be far-reaching, uh, and whatever China does in reaction, the UK government has to be prepared for the consequences and the results. Uh, and there's been an admission by Oliver Dowden that there will be consequences and results, not just when it comes to the, the, the 5G technology, which will now cost more and take longer to roll out, but also, as I say, in that relationship with China. Absolutely. We're going to leave it there for the moment, though. Benji, coming back to you as and when further updates trickle in on that front. We keep a close eye on all of those developments coming in from the UK after its decision to uh, remove a five from to remove Huawei from its five.